You might think I look like I have a sweet tooth, but I actually don't. But there are some things that I just can't resist, and honeycomb is one of them. Honeycomb is so simple to make, but as the name suggests, it's not entirely made of honey. It has a little bit of honey. It's more to do with the, the wonderful sort of texture or the contour within the honeycomb that gives it its name. So to start, we have about 400 grams of sugar. Liquid glucose. This is kind of a stabilizing factor. It, it sort of controls the crystallization of the syrup. It's really kind of uh, a good ingredient to have when, make, when baking. It's an inverted sugar, so it helps in cakes keep moisture. And it's really sticky and hard to work with, which is a bit annoying at times, but get as much as you can in there. So I recommend if you're gonna measure it out, always measure out five grams more, because look, you'll end up leaving half of it in the container. Okay, our wonderful honey that we got from Paul from the organic shop. Again, same with the honey, just a little few more, a few more grams on your weighing, because you will always leave a little bit in the container. I'm gonna put a dash of water in this. A little tiny bit to make it moist around the edges. Okay, and that helps the actual caramel develop. It'll stop the possibility of crystallization. It'll just help those sugars liquefy. So basically, we've gotta wait for this syrup to melt and reach 155 degrees. The actual temperature we need to add the bicarb at is 160, but because the syrup or the caramel is gonna be so hot at 155 degrees, it will get to 160 in a blink of an eye. So take it off at 55, 155. By the time you get yourself together, whisk in the bicarb, it will be 160, the residual heat. While that's happening, we're gonna prepare our mold to pour our honeycomb into. push it in so we don't create any seams. We've got that line tray. So that's perfect. Ready, waiting for our honeycomb. So what I don't do with caramel is I don't whisk it. If you whisk it all together, you're gonna to get hot points uh, and it's gonna burn or it's gonna crystallize, especially if you whisk it before it's hot enough for it to uh, be stable. So what I do is I just let the, 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 the crystals, the sugar and the syrups dissolve into the water. If you need to, just give a little shaky shake like that, but don't get in there with a whisk and whisk it. A lot of chefs like to get a, um, a pastry brush with some water and just brush down the edges, which is great. That's a good way of doing it as well. But I find minimal interference ends up with maximum results. So now we're using a thermometer all the sugars and syrups have dissolved. So we've got a lovely sort of blonde color to it at the moment and it's 140 degrees. Now at this point, it's gonna get hot very rapidly. Okay, so we just keep moving it so we distribute the heat evenly. Be very careful of this stuff. You do not want to get it stuck to your skin. If you do, straight under cold water. Okay, that's 55 degrees now, 150, 455. So we'll take that off the heat. That is gonna to continue to get hotter. We'll get our whisk. Okay, we'll just check it. Up she goes. 152, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 160. Okay, in with the bicarb. Whisk, 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 whisk. And look at that, it's, wow. That is going crazy. As you can see, it fills the thing. It's gonna overflow, oh my God, I should have gone with a bigger container. Oh well. Now, do not touch it. Just let it go. But you can see how it reacts with the bicarb. It's aerating. And uh, what we need to do is just let that cool down. All this stuff we can eat, that's great. It can all go into the, uh, the butter. But it's like the blob, it's a horror movie. And that, I think it's stopped reacting now. We can just chill out. Once that's cooled, it will drop a little. And then when it's absolutely cool, you'll break it open and you'll see this wonderful honeycomb effect. Now I've let this rest or cool down for about an hour. Now for the moment of truth. Oh, it's a messy job. It gets stuck to you. 
You'll get it stuck in your teeth when you eat it and you cannot resist eating it. But now we're gonna make this butter. So mixing machine, I've got 500 grams of soft butter here into the machine, like so. Okay, so. So you probably wanna use about half. So we normally do 600 grams of honeycomb, which is a full recipe, to a kilo of butter. So I'm gonna use half of it to 500 grams. Okay, now on with the machine. And we're just going to crunch that all together. Perfect. I forgot, a little pinch of salt. Salted honeycomb butter. So about five grams of salt in there. Again, mixy, mixy, mixy. Job done. Now, a great way to store it is to roll it into little logs in cling film, pop it in the fridge and just take slices of the butter as you need it, as you make your toast, your crumpets, whatever you want to put it on, banana bread. I will just put that aside now and I'm going to show you how to make crumpets. There's a little history to this crumpet recipe. Now, I did a crumpet recipe about two or three years ago that I was pretty happy with. But subsequently, we were doing a Moroccan menu at my restaurant and we were trialling these Moroccan crepes. And they just presented like perfect little mini flat crumpets. And we came up with this recipe and I think it is the most perfect crumpet recipe. Light, airy, lots of, if you do it right, you get lots of lovely bubbles. So I'm giving you my secret recipe. Here we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to activate our yeast. We've got our dried yeast here, a little bit of flour as well. So it's 10 grams of flour, 10 grams of yeast, 125 grams or mils of water. In she goes. Okay, so we're just gonna swirl that around into the blender. We're gonna put 375 mils of water, three eggs, We've got uh, 125 mils of full cream milk. Now, I really need a lid for this, but I don't have one at the moment. I'll just put that over the top. Okay, we're just gonna just pu pulse that to mix. We add our flours. So here we have a plain flour, simple plain flour, 250 grams. And then here we have 250 grams of semolina flour. I keep that bowl, put it on top like so. And now we just mix. Now let's have a look at our yeast. It's starting to aerate. It's a good idea to put this in a warm place just to help the activation. But you can see that that yeast has dissolved into the liquid. Okay, so now what we can do is we just add that into our first part of the batter and we blend again. Okay, now we just tip this out. We need to let this prove now and it's gonna double in size. You can see now that that is doubled in size. So we just basically Loosen that off, Let's give it a bit of a stir. Okay, so one ladle per crumpet ring. Fill it just below. And now we just let the grill do all the work. So watch it happen. We don't flip them until they're completely set on top. The heat is going to sort of create expansion within the air that the gas is created by the activation of the yeast. As you can see now, they're gonna keep popping open and as they set, they're gonna stay open and you'll end up with these wonderful, wonderful sort of craters within the crumpet. Come with me. Gotta get some uh little uh, edible flowers. Excuse me, Cameron, yeah. trade you some crumpets 
for some edible flowers. I, I just like need a bit to make. Of comfort. I do. I mean, you do. <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Just to make them look beautiful. And I saw you had some fantastic ones. Wow! Look at those strawberries. We got some beautiful ones down oh, here. Oh, I think these will be perfect. Rainbow confetti. Thanks, Cameron. I'll bring some crumpets no over. Worries. Sounds good. The crumpets have been flipped. We want to toast them on one side. We just want them golden brown. You never overcook your crumpets on top. So I'm going to take them off and look at those fantastic holes. Straight onto our plate. Let's have a look. Let's, well, they're all good. I was going to choose the best ones, but they're all fantastic. We've got some of our honeycomb butter, a nice little blob of that onto those. It's great. While they're hot, so the, the honeycomb butter melts into the holes and when you eat it, it dribbles down your chin. And then some of Cameron's beautiful edible flowers. A final flourish, a little bit of confectioner's sugar, icing sugar over the top. That is a piece of art. <laughs>